Hello YouTube, welcome back to the Mighty Mouse channel. Hey, today I want to do a review on this Geoconda or Gaoconda 5.6 millimeter pencil lead, clutch pencil that is. And also, stick around, I want to open this E&M Germany clutch pencil. This is a rustic look and I really love the look and feel of this thing. And I think it's going to be great for art. Plus I'm going to give three reasons why I'm moving away from wood pencils to clutch pencils. If you're interested in this sort of thing or just like pencils and clutch pencils, stick around. This is going to be very interesting. Here we go with my explanation and review. All right, I have this really awesome product from uh, Canson. This is a recycled XL series paper, and it is a bristle paper. It's great for doing pencil work, 96 pound, 11 by 14. And this has two surfaces, and it is bright white. Let me show you real quick. Now, this is very large page, so what I want to do is cut it down to size and put it on this clipboard, and I'll do that in fast motion. Be right back. Okay, for my number one reason that I am switching to clutch pencils is this right here. Uh, it doesn't matter what name brand you buy. This happens all too often, and it's very frustrating, especially when it just keeps breaking and breaking, and next thing you know, you've got maybe a half an inch of lead that's going to work for you, and, uh, and you've wasted the entire pencil. And some name brands can be quite expensive, but for what clutch pencils are going to offer, I can emulate this very thick lead or a very fine lead with a clutch pencil. Let me explain. Okay, let me quickly explain the science behind pencil sharpening and the reason why artists like really long leads. Many artists will sharpen them and have a long extension of the lead. Here is the science behind why I'm going to clutch pencils. Because uh, a pencil that is this size, which is close to this one, maybe a little smaller. But anyway, they'll shave it back a good two inches and have it sticking out. Makes it real easy to sharpen the end so that you can use the tip. However, what they're doing is, if you have a pencil that looks like this and the lead comes out like this okay so that's somewhat of a pencil so this is the lead here and uh, they won't use it like this because then they're constantly having to shave back this wood to get a new point so basically what they're doing is, is they're using uh, a segment of the lead that's like about this big so and I just broke my lead again so anyway uh, what I'm trying to explain here is that if you're only using the tip of the pencil this upper area right here and having to do all the shaving then why not get yourself a pencil you know a three to five millimeter lead is so fine that you can barely see it on camera and yet it gives you a finer tip than you have there and you never have to peel back anything and it's very easy to break as you just saw so <laughs> this must be old lead there we go So this is uh, one of the reasons. The breaking of the lid. So I've uh, resharpened this pencil that broke on me and I can't pull the lead out so it's good. Typically if you have a broken lead somewhere in here this will pull right out uh, as it did when I showed you in the beginning. And, uh, and in my opinion when you break a lead approximately an inch, you've lost an inch worth of usage. But then again, if you're only using the top part of the lead, you're not using this barrel part here. And as you can see, that is a, a lot of lead you're wasting, basically, uh, for the sake of using a wooded pencil. So when I ordered this thing, 
I ordered this basically to have a big fat lead that I can do a lot of shading with and uh, and this is marvelous for that but I'm not going to use this for its extra fine point when I need an extra fine point I'm going to go to this and I no longer am going to this because you either have to shave it way out so that you're not shaving it a dozen times in an hour uh, or you're going to shave it or you're just not going to use it. So that's the science behind the reason for me going to clutch pencils is that uh, it's basically ergonomic. Ec it's basically economics here that uh, you're only going to use the top 10% in here and the rest of this 90% is getting wasted. That's a good reason. And this pencil is great because it continuously uh, rotates this lead. And this is the number seven, which is my go-to size for doing most artwork. Now in a, a non-clutch pencil, uh, the leads are what's important if you need a harder lead. Uh, all of the leads that you're looking for are not going to be available in clutch pencil. So you may hang on to these like this is an extra hard. It's a 2H Ticonderoga and uh, it's irreplaceable at this point. But as far as leads are concerned, I have a variety of leads from now with three, five, seven, and nine. And then I bought this last set of pencils here, which I really love. This Nick Pro is three, five, seven, and nine. Comes with their own lead. And um, so clutch pencils such as these, this is the Pacific Arm. I believe this is a one and a half and this is a two millimeter. And uh, I'm never, ever gonna break this lead. I'm never gonna have to sharpen it. Although you can, you, there are sharpeners that can give you a fine point. That's different from sharpening and peeling off uh, the, paint, the uh, wood on the end. So one other kind of pencil was, uh, I did this uh, video on this one because uh, this is around a number two pencil uh, hardness. And it gives you this really, really long flat edge here. Uh, but it, you know, it has problems too. You have to sharpen this thing and get this wood peeled back. But this does a really, really good job. But now I can emulate that. This is what I'm going to review today, this Geoconda or Gaoconda 6. And it actually says on here, Artist Leads, Authentic Quality Product, woohoo, by Koinor. And uh, this says also that it, these graphic leads are gradation 6B. There are six leads in here, and these leads are exactly the same thickness as this. So I, I can use a clutch pencil and easily replace this one now. So this is the other thing I'm going to review today, which is this E&M clutch pencil, which is a 5.6. This thing's cool. Look at this. Oh, look at that. It's rustic. I don't care that it's short because with a thick pencil like this, I'm probably going to be doing this sort of thing and not writing like this. Uh, but this lead is a 5.6 and it is super duper. Just to show you the difference, it is almost exactly the same thickness. So when I let this lead go way out here and I flatten it out, I'm doing basically the same thing as this. I can flatten it as far as I want to. So the thing that I want to compare today, uh, I do not know uh, what type of lead this is, whether it's a number two pencil lead or like uh, this Koei Noor. Uh, this two millimeter actually says 5B on here, but I'm not sure if that means that's a 5B lead. It could be because this is a 6B lead, which is a very soft lead. Perfect for shading. So whatever's in here, I'm going to compare it to it and find out. Now, I could not find a 6B in a length like this. So this one's going to, for now, stick out a little bit further, but I'm not afraid of that. Uh, I'll eventually use it down to where it can hide like this one. And all of these holders are different lengths and different sizes. There's 5.5, 5.6 millimeters and uh, leads that are this long. You know, that might mean that this is six inches. That looks a little short for six, but uh, let's find out. Let's do some comparison on paper. All right, so the one I want to emulate here is the Ebony. And this is my favorite one, favorite one that I used to use. And uh, you can see how it can shadow. 
like that. And then for darkness, it gets pretty shiny because, you know, all lead does. That's the ebony. And then here is the Home Depot. Trying to shade here. It's not quite as soft as that. I can tell the difference. Home Depot. Yeah, you can see the difference in the two words right there immediately. For the sake of, although this is not a large enough lead, but uh, it'll give you an idea of how, how this uh, diamond infused lead is so amazing. Look at that. And then if I go lightly, that's not bad for a 7mm. That looks nice. So, uh... These two clutch pencils here, uh, this Italy here, the, I mean this Koei Noir, is supposed to be a two millimeter. Now, if you were to compare that to a regular number two pencil, they are almost exactly the same uh, diameter. So, if you were to sharpen this, and it would be the same. Oh, I forgot to put this uh, Kurutoga KT. So, let's do this. Uh, yeah, oh geez, I just broke the lead. Wow. I just said I would never break the lead on the op 5.6. Though it is very easy to press down at a bad angle and break this lid. So a softer pencil is doesn't necessarily make it good for shading. Oh so this is the um Let's call this one the Technograph Koe Nor. And I'm not even going to do this one because it's basically the same uh, type of pencil and lead. So now let's see what kind of a lead we've got in here. That is uh, supposed to be a 5.6 lead. It feels uh, semi-hard. You can hear those bristles on that paper. Now, I, I should have worked with this first. Let's see if I can smooth it out. There we go. I guess you would uh, need to get the kind of surface you want to use for shading and uh, and then work with that. So this is the lead from e &M. And now let's open up the star of the show. What I really like about this is the fact that it comes in a case. Ah. Look at that. That's nice. Oh, it even has a spongy thing. I don't want to touch it too much because I know that it's got loose graphite on it. So this is a nice way to store this. This, this is actually nice, uh, nice professional grade. The, the, the foam in there keeps them from rattling around. <laughs> My whole tripod just fell down on top of me, so I, I got to figure out where I left off. I think that I was getting ready to introduce the star of the show here. And... That is exactly how much longer these are. So these are made for another pencil brand holder. But uh, I really like the look and feel of this one. I saw it on another YouTuber. And uh, when these work down, then they'll be good. Um, if it's the same thing, then it's not going to matter. But here we go. Let's see what we got. Oh, I can already tell. 
it, it is a 6B. So the one that came with the pencil is uh, more like a number two or maybe a, something a little bit softer, maybe closer to this. No, it looks like it's closer to that. So let's uh, draw ourselves. Oh my goodness, that almost feels like charcoal. That is really, really soft. So this is the, we'll call this the Geo 6. Wow. <laughs> All right, so I'm very happy today. I have not tried these before making this video. I have to say that if you are experiencing pencil breakage like this and frustrated, uh, just know that clutch pencils uh, are game changers, especially when they're this thick and offer such a very, very soft lead uh, to for your work. You know, it's close to graphite, but it's not. And then uh, the next size clutch pencil uh, is almost the exact same size as your standard number two pencil in diameter. So uh, without having to worry about lead breakage here, if you don't press too hard, I, you saw me break, break the lead. Uh, these leads are uh, come very long and last a long time. So price-wise, I think they're worth their weight for sure. Now this one here is a very soft one. I hadn't used this one in so long. This is the one and a half uh, Pacific Arm. It's a uh, very nice lead. I'm back. Okay. So there it is. In conclusion, my reasons for going to clutch pencils. Number one, the breakage. Number two, uh, the size offerings. And now they're getting into this 6B, the, the softness. The leads are quite comparable. I would think if you want a very, very hard lead, you're going to have to hang on to your uh, Dixon Ticonderogas. So I hope this was informational for you. And uh, and this will help you if you're having troubles with um, your pencils and want to consider going to clutch pencils. I would say, number one, start with something a little bit bigger, like maybe this, a 2 millimeter, or maybe one for shading as a 5.6 millimeter. And uh, you can start with that. Because if you're used to pressing hard and you use a number five or number seven or number three you really got to press light with these things and, and not go heavy-handed anyway thanks for watching have a great day